All right, guys. Welcome back to another load. I thought this would be an interesting one because this strip um, it's pretty bumpy. This strip was built for ag cats back in the day. Ag cats are quite a bit smaller than the 802s, and this plane barely fits in this little load facility. Like my wingtips probably eight inches away from a big I beam on my left side. Y'all, I don't think y'all can see. Um, but anyway, the strip is uh, it's pretty bumpy. It's, I don't know how long it is. It's, it's long enough. And there's a ramp at the end. I don't think it was intentional, but it'll, with this load I'm carrying, it'll probably get the airplane in the air right before it's ready to fly, and I bet you I'll settle back down in the grass and have to uh, ride that out for just a minute. We'll see. Um, I've carried fertilized loads off this strip that weigh about the same as what I'm taking right now. And uh, sometimes uh, the plane will fly when it hits that bump, and sometimes it won't, so we'll find out. There he goes. Dalton just texting me the loads and the acres. So I've got my job pulled up here on this iPad. I'm spraying a chemical called Clincher, which is a grass killer. Uh, it kills grass and rice. It also kills corn and milo. So I'm going to have to be careful. I'm going to have to go scope the area out, uh, make sure there's not any corn downwind where I'm spraying. You know, that's close enough that I have to worry about. Or milo. I don't think there's any milo. But there might be some corn. We'll, we'll find out. Find out when we get over there. So this is a high gallon chemical. Uh, each one of these chemicals has a federal label that, that specifies, you know, the minimum gallon per acre that you, that you can spray it. Uh, I think the minimum on clincher is five. Uh, either way, clincher likes water, so seven's about as much as we'll get out of these planes, seven gallons per acre. So we mix it uh, for that, and I'm going to go spray it at seven gallons per acre, um, which uh, that gives me an 85 acre load, which isn't a whole lot uh, for this plane. You know, at four gallons, we'll take, you know, uh, 160 acres or so. At, at three gallons, I'll take a, a 225, you know, 230-acre load or more. You know, I could take 250 if I wanted to. Um, so anyway, we're spraying seven gallon per acre, 85-acre loads. The 600-pound load, I mean, 600-gallon load, which is about 4,800 pounds, and then I've got uh, about 160 gallons of fuel on here, which is... Uh, see. I don't do this every load. I'm just doing it for y'all's sake here. Uh, let's see. Uh, what did I say? 160 gallons of fuel times six. Uh, 960 gallons of fuel, 4,800 pounds of liquid. A uh, 5,760-pound load, which for this airplane is absolutely no problem. I'm going to do 85 up here. Make sure I'm right. 5 times 7. 600 gallons. All right, rock and roll. There we are. That's a fast pump. I was not expecting it to fill up that quickly. That's good. We like fast. All right, so I'm gonna get my flap set. I've got my computer set for seven gallons. I have to change my swath width a little bit. I've set up my seven gallons of my Swath Pro spray system here. I've got my swath changed to my GPS, and then I've got my gallon per acre set at 6.8, which will give me a little bit left over to trim with if I need to trim. In fact, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that to 6.7. So anyway, get my blower going. It's getting warm in here. All right, here we go. Get my trim set. Got my elevator trim set, rotor trim set. Spray handle up, spray pump on. Tail wheel locked. We ready to rock and roll. All right, let's see what happens here. Don't really have much wind to speak of today. A little bit out of the north and the west. And I'm, I'm taking off towards the west right now. And uh, this is kind of a bumpy strip. You'll, you'll see it, hopefully. Alright, well, coming up on the bump here. Let's see what happens. I don't, I don't think it's going to fly. Yeah, it did. Booyah! There's also another ramp right there at the end of the grass. Alright, good deal over with no big deal no big deal at all I'm real close to my fields they're just right over this tree line so I'm not going to gain a lot of altitude because I'm I'm literally a mile away I'm gonna get my power pulled back here pull back to 3500 foot pound 34 33 whatever when I pull my prop back my torque will rise because I'm increasing the pitch of my propeller blades which makes a uh, more torque on the gearbox. 
All right, we got all that set. So my two fields, two of them are right on my left wing here. A couple of triangles. Love triangles in this business. Then I've got another little block over here that I'm going to go, uh, I'm probably going to spray that first because it would be a little bit better for the camera. So one thing i got to do, I was spraying bug killer on cotton a minute ago. Won't hurt this rice at all, but I've still got that in the boom. So what I need to do is i got to fly over this field. i got to flush my booms out and make sure I get the chemical I'm spraying on that rice full in my booms before I start spraying this rice. Also, while I'm doing that, I'm looking for corn. don't see any. Uh, all right. Got the booms flushed. All right, so we got a road crew right here working on this road. So what I'm going to have to do here, I'm, gonna, I'm about to go lay some smoke at the edge of this field right close to these guys and we're going to see where that smoke goes because if the smoke blows over towards that road crew I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot here depending on, on the velocity in which the smoke is moving. I'm going to come right on around here. We also got a fuel truck in this field too. Um, well, damn it. I'll go ahead and lay the smoke. I can't spray this field with that fuel truck in it, so I'm gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to wait until they're gone. So I might go do those triangles first. Let's go see where that smoke's moving. All right, it looks like it has crossed that ditch. And it pretty much stayed there, so I'm okay with that. That's not, that's not a job killer right there. The smoke's rising up pretty good. All right, I think I am going to have to lay off a little bit right there. Cause, all right, well, damn it. Yeah, I hate that. Okay. All right, well, I can't start spraying that field anyway because that fuel truck is backing up to fill that gas tank up full of fuel. Yeah, that guy doesn't like going across the gravel road fertilizer. They ought to see me going across this field. Or the water pump. So what I'm going to do instead, because that fuel trunk's in this field, I'm going to go spray these two triangles. And uh, so same thing, I'm going to look for some corn. The wind is blowing from the northwest, so I really need to look for corn over in this area right here. Anything upwind is fine. Chemical is not going to move upwind unless there's something magical going on that, that defies the laws of physics. My air conditioner on hot. All right, so there's a tower over there. It's way far away from the field. I don't need to worry about that tower while I'm working. I need to worry about it when I'm ferrying, flying around, but it's not going to be in my my returning area or anything like that. Okay. So good news. I don't see any corn, yeah, maybe he's working which out. means we are free to rock and roll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a racetrack pattern on these triangles. Uh, they're, they're one, they're in the same line, they're, they back up to the same ditch, it's a big straight line. I'm going to set my AB line up on that straight line, and then I'm going to come around and set my C on that furthest point right there on the triangle. I'm going to work my racetrack pattern like that. So anyway, give me plenty of room, I'm going to turn this dude around and we're going to get rolling. I've got a wind out of the northwest. I'm going to hang over this tree line a little bit and make sure that that wind blows my spray on into this field. And by the way, when I was flying over, I was looking at the borders and everything on the field. There are no obstacles, no power lines. All i got to worry about are these trees right here. So that's why I'm a little bit high because my left wing is over these trees. I don't want to run into the trees. I want to fly over the trees. So now I've cleared the trees. I'm going to get back down here where I belong. All right, boom. All right, so that was my AB line. I'm going to make my turn here. Go to that furthest point right there and set my C. That southern triangle point sticks out a little farther than the northern triangle. So I'm like, that's why I'm going to go to it. See if I can't get on my, there we go. All right, 
still double check and make sure I didn't miss any corn. These are all bean fields. Clencher won't do nothing to beans. Uh, it is a grass killer, and corn, believe it or not, is a grass. So there's my sea line. Boom. Done. Now I'm going to start working my racetrack. Also going to watch that fuel truck because he needs to be out of there before I do any spraying. Is that the one on the hill or where you looking down the hill? Up there. A lot of places. The last thing you want to spray is a person. That's not good. Clincher doesn't have a doesn't have a, a danger, a high danger or anything like that. It's not unnecessarily poison. It's not not uh, that harmful. I mean, if you drank it, it wouldn't be good. But you know, it's pretty easy to not do that. Up out there, I'm checking my boom pressure. I'm checking my gallons. Looks like I'm getting right at 6.7, which is where I set it, which is good. Boom pressure is where it's supposed to be. I got the boom pressure set at 45. It's not quite getting 45. It might not be able to. But my boom system will keep a, uh, a constant pressure as best as it can. Well, this isn't that exciting of a field. There's not that much to worry about in this field. Don't really have many dangers. Uh, there's a tree line, but I'm already away from it. Uh, not seeing any corn still. I don't see any other airplanes out here. I don't see any towers. I don't see nothing to worry about. It's a nice wide open uh, field. The only problem is that they're triangles. We don't like triangles because it gets you get to that point and it's just on off, on off, on off, and you're making all these turns and spraying a quarter acre of pass. It seems like. I'm flying a little bit fast. I need to pull that power back just a little bit. Uh, we really like to keep it 150 on the airspeed, spray and herbicide. Uh, the studies show that at 150 or less, the wind shear that hits the spray as it comes out of your booms uh, doesn't break the spray up that much um, compared to 150 plus. I say above 150, your, the percent of your droplets under 200 microns is much higher uh, than it is at 150 or less. And so that's why we keep it 150 or less. Uh, we want our droplets to not have any microns uh, below 200% or, or whatever I just said. Uh, we want to keep the fine particles to an absolute minimum because the fines are what are going to move around. They're going to drift. It, they're almost lighter than air, it seems like. I mean, they'll just, they'll just go wherever the wind takes them. And, you know, like if there was any corn downwind, and I had a whole bunch of droplets under 200 microns, like those might make it to the corn, it might kill the corn even if it's a mile away with, with hardly any wind blowing. Uh, atmospheric conditions are extremely important for uh, mitigating drift. Um, uh, especially uh, things like temperature inversions and things like that can pick your stuff up and it can carry it for miles. Uh, so you have to be really cautious uh, about about what you're spraying and when you're spraying it and what's going on in the atmosphere while you're spraying it. Those are all things we have to constantly pay attention to uh, because uh, drift is a pretty serious thing. You know, if this drifted over an entire cornfield and killed the whole cornfield, uh, we'd have to pay for that and it could be real expensive. Um, in my career, I've seen, uh, this was when I was working on the ground, one of the pilots at the place I was working at sprayed Roundup uh, during a temperature inversion and it killed $600,000 worth of rice. And unfortunately, the insurance uh, uh, policy that they had would only cover $300,000 per year in drift. So that flying service had to take $300,000 out of their pocket uh, and make up the difference. And it took, I mean, there's, you know, flying services, a lot of them just don't have that much left over. There's, uh, the margins in this business are extremely thin probably less than 10%. Um, so uh, that's a lot of money. And uh, I know that particular flying service basically had to do free flying for that farmer for the next, you know, five or six, seven years. And that's how they pay the money back. only right now, kind of like bow weevil. So it's really important. I've been to several drift mitigation classes. Uh, there's a guy here that puts on a really good class. He studies all the science. Um, we've got, he's got a machine 
he'll he'll line up a string, and you go spray over the string, and he runs the string through a machine, and it'll tell you exactly if you're uh, how even your pattern is. It'll tell you if you've got um, what percentage of your droplets are below 200 microns, uh, and all that stuff. And and uh, we go over that and make sure everything's good uh, with our spray system. You know, every other year, or so. And this new spray system we've got on these planes now, it's called the, the Capsan Swap Pro. And the, uh, the spray pattern, uh, as far as the droplet sizes and everything, uh, are very comparable to a ground rig, which is absolutely amazing. And these booms, um, they'll still drip if you do it wrong, but uh, much less likely, um, that it, you know, that, that you're going to uh, do a lot of damage. And the way they work, they pulse, so each nozzle has got an electric solenoid. There's a hundred something nozzles on this on these booms. And each one of them's got an electric solenoid and it pulses. It just goes pop, 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 like that. Uh, and it, it uses the pulsing to hold uh, consistent boom pressure. And also, the pulsing, somehow, I don't, I don't know the science, I've never really read into it that much. Somehow the pulsing uh, will help reduce uh, the droplets uh, under 200 microns. And I have been spraying with these booms uh, all season. This is my first first airplane I've ever flown that had them on there. I think it's a pretty new system. And uh, let me tell you, they are pretty amazing. They work really, really well. Uh, and the spray pretty much falls straight down. And uh, and they do a really good job. And I'm, I'm happy, I'm real, real happy that they're on here because it's just one extra thing um, to help us do a good job for the farmer and not kill stuff. Uh, this morning's really nice. It's a, it's a really beautiful day today. There's not really much wind at all today. Uh, it's nice and smooth out here. I've, I've been having a really good morning so far. I haven't sprayed in a while. We've been doing a bunch of dry fertilizer. And uh, sometimes, you know, like we'll, we'll fly up to about 30 mile an hour winds doing dry fertilizer. And man, that is a long, tough day. I mean, we'll fly off strips like I just took off of a 30 mile an hour wind. Not a tailwind on that strip. <laughs> but, you know, quartering headwinds, you know, crosswinds, stuff like that. Um, we fly in all different wind conditions. Um, I'll take off with a tailwind on a strip like I just did up to about 10 miles an hour, maybe 12, uh, depending on the load size, of course, and all that stuff. Um, it's just part of the job, you know, like we uh, we fly these planes a lot. We've done a lot of takeoffs and landings. I've said this before, I mean, I've done over 25,000 takeoffs and landings in my career. Uh, so I have a very good understanding of the limitations and the capabilities of this aircraft. And I also have a very good understanding of my limitations and capabilities, which might be less or more than this aircraft can handle. And I need to know uh, for sure. You know, I, I don't, if I'm overconfident and I, I, you know, uh, and I push it right to the edge, I might end up in the ditch off the end of the strip. Uh, because the airplane just wasn't capable. So I need to understand both limitations. And then I might have limitations that will be less than the airplane's limitations. Like, the airplane might take off of a certain strip with a tailwind, but I'm not comfortable, so it's not going to happen. You know, th those are those are lessons that you don't want to learn the hard way. You don't want to find out the limitations of the aircraft the hard way. And that's how you hurt yourself, kill yourself, uh, and then some other man will be raising your kids. I'm coming up to the, where these two triangles meet. I'm going to have to start shutting off right there between these fields here. So I'm doing 85 acres of load. I'm uh, pretty constantly been 6.8. There's 72 acres. I got 150 gallons in here. I'm spraying 7 gallons per acre. So 7 times 10 is 70. 7 times 20 is 140. So I've got 20 acres of spray in here. That's going to put me at 92 acres. Uh, that's absolutely perfect. Uh, we generally run about 10% over because I've got to turn the spray on before I get to the field and shut it off after I leave the field uh, in this particular scenario where I'm not going to hurt what's on either side of the field. Uh, if there was corn here, well, I probably would be spraying, but 
Um, sometimes we'll spray with a susceptible crop right next to the field. And in that case, uh, I would not be dragging it out over that field. Um, and my acre counter would be much more accurate. But since it's not, um, I'm going to run about 10% over. And that will ensure that uh, I have enough to uh, spray all of this rice uh, without having to buy any extra chemical. I just noticed that fuel truck was leaving. It's a good thing. So now I know that when I'm done with these two triangles, I'll be able, able to go and spray the good stuff over there. And I will need to pay attention. There is that road crew over there. I need to, I need to constantly check the wind to make sure it's not blowing over there on them because that is a no-no. You do not do that. I'm going to go ahead and let it run over this corner right here. I'll shut it off on my next boat. Oh, oops, see? I was looking down at the field. I got off my lights about 10 foot. And, and I'm running a little bit of a narrower swath, so it's not going to streak or anything right there. That, that'll be okay. But uh, that's not, uh, not... You don't want to do that a lot. Definitely, definitely keep the lights tight on these planes. You want to do the best job you can for these farmers, because... These guys pay out the butt for this chemical. Some of it is $40 an acre, times that by 10,000 acres, and that's how much some of these guys have to spend on chemical every round. The airplane's a lot cheaper than that. Uh, the average price in this area is probably $7.50 an acre is what we would charge um, to, to spray with the airplane. We don't sell the chemical. Um, so we only we only get the the, the charge per acre. A typical pilot pays 20% of that, uh, and that ends up being in the 802 in this part of the country about $450 per flight hour. You know, and uh, a 650 700 hour season is a pretty good season, so you can do that math. Um, we we can make quite a bit of money in these planes, a lot more than people realize. Uh, and then also you can screw up at the beginning of the year, crash your airplane, not have one to fly and make zero dollars. So there's, there's two ends of that sword. All right, so I'm getting pretty close to running out. I'm going to pay attention. When my boom pressure drops, I want to uh, turn my pump off as soon as possible because if you run these pumps dry, it's liable to, to eat the back of the pump out. All right, boom pressure drop, spray off. My strip's right there. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the power off. I don't need to pull it all the way off, but I did to slow down quite a bit. I'm going to start putting my flaps in. You can put the flaps in on this plane at 140 miles an hour, which is what I did. Now I'm going to give it a little bit more power. I'm just going to drag it in. So the goal on this strip is to land on the grass right before the concrete, because if that concrete is not smooth, it will throw you around, and if your wheels aren't firmly planted on the ground, you can't use your brakes. So I'm going to drag her in. I'm going to try to try to land out here in the middle of this grass. All right, power off. Coming on in. Pull my flaps out to get my wheels planted. You see how bumpy this strip is right here, throwing my tail up in the air. All right. All right, we'll give her a little bit of reverse. Help me slow down. So this is extremely tight. My wingtip is going to be about eight inches from that building when I pass up through here. So I got to make sure I'm all the way over to the left. This is only the second day I've flown off this strip. I did probably seven or eight loads on it the other day. This is my first time over here. All right, looks like we are going to clear. Excellent. All right, so I got to swing my tail around and not get it in that ditch right there and then also not get my wingtip in this corner of this building right here. All right, another successful turnaround here at the Simpson Strip. All right, so I'm gonna line up a little over to the right side of this runway, make sure my wing clears the little building deal. Rock and roll, so that's a load out of the Simpson Strip. Hope it was fun for everybody. I think I'm gonna turn this camera off so I can concentrate a little bit more. It is slightly distracting, believe it or not. We're very good multitaskers, but uh, definitely want to uh, 
keep the multitasking to a minimum if at all possible. So hope y'all enjoy the ride along. I'm gonna continue the rest of the day by myself with my own thoughts, maybe some music, maybe an audio book. We'll just see what the day brings. So hope y'all have a good one. Got any questions for me, leave them uh, in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them as long as they're not stupid questions. <laughs> Most of you guys have really good questions, and I enjoy answering them. So keep them coming, guys. I'll catch you next time.